Today's discussion is going to be pet therapy to de help you de-stress, but the real title of this talk in reality is the use of the therapy dog in the orthopedic office. Thanks for joining today. This slide presentation will not take too long. My name is Leon Benson. I'm an orthopedic surgeon with the Illinois Bone and Joint Institute in Glenview. These are my disclosures. I do a little bit of engineering consulting for a company called TriMed. I do editing for a couple of journals. I'm a hospital department administrator, and my practice is called the Illinois Bone and Joint Institute. So who are we going to meet today at the end of the talk? Well, the virtual therapy that will make everybody happy is meeting my two dogs, Chelsea and Cooper, who are both Portuguese water dogs. But first, a little bit about myself. I thought I'd give you an up-to-date picture. This was taken yesterday. I grew up in Evanston, Illinois. I'm an orthopedic hand surgeon since 1991. I treat adults and children. I was influenced by a group that I like to call the dog people about 15 years ago. I pursued a variety of dog activities and gradually introduced my dogs into a medical environment over the past uh, 15 years. Now, what we're going to talk about today, that is today's agenda, is a short talk, which is this, about therapy dogs. We're going to meet our celebrity therapy dogs who are with me today in the office. We're going to tour the office with Cooper. And we're also going to actually see Cooper work with a real patient who has agreed to come in today for the purpose of this webinar. And then after that and during it, we may have a period for some questions and maybe some answers if I can figure out the answers. So first off the bat, what is a therapy dog? Well, let's talk about the different class of dogs that do work with people in the world of assistance and therapy. The first class is called assistance dogs. This is the familiar guide dog, dogs that assist people who are hearing impaired, diabetic alert dogs, dogs that help with mobility, dogs who do seizure response work to warn their handler or owner about seizures, autism support dogs, dogs that are allergy detection where they can detect minute quantities of material or substances that would make the uh, owner or handler have an allergic reaction, and then psychiatric uh, service dogs. Another class of the assistance dog is the working dog. I think everybody's familiar with this. Search and Rescue, this is a picture of a famous Portuguese water dog named Dutch, who worked with her hand, his handler, Connie Millard. This was Dutch at the 9-11 pile uh, doing search and rescue work in 2001. Dogs also do explosive detection work, narcotics detection, cancer detection. There are military support dogs, and also dogs that work with people suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Then you have a class that my dogs are in, which are therapy dogs. These are dogs that actually provide therapeutic interventions to uh, other people or patients. They're not trained to live with a specific handler. They usually work with a teammate, which is usually your dog's owner. These dogs frequently volunteer at hospitals, schools, or extended care facilities. These dogs are frequently trained to be comfortable in new environments and with uh, new people. Generally speaking, they have a calm temperament. They're not phased by unfamiliar noises or movements, and they're comfortably comfortable being handled by other people. This picture you can see on your right is Cooper with uh, a friend of our families who was suffering from a life-threatening illness and recovered. And Cooper made a few visits to sort of cheer her up during her recovery period. Last class that you probably heard about are emotional support animals, sometimes called ESAs. Now these are animals that provide comfort to help relieve a symptom or effect of a disability. They're really not necessarily pets. They don't have to be restricted by any species category. Really any animal that provides comfort or is claimed to provide comfort or companionship can be classified as an emotional support animal. These animals typically receive no specific training or any training at all. And very frequently, the popularity of an emotional support animal is because the owner can be exempted from certain federal housing or federal travel rules. Emotional support animals became a little bit more in the news about a year ago when a woman took a peacock on an airplane flight by United and claimed that it was an emotional support animal. 
Um, that actually led to sort of an outcry and changing the rules. And now most airlines have their own specific rules about emotional support animals um, because of that incident was about a year ago. Here's another picture. It's actually a true story. Somebody took a photograph turning around in the airplane, saw a turkey sitting behind them, which was an emotional support animal. See, there's the turkey and thought it was noteworthy to look at this guy's expression. I usually wind up having the seat next to the turkey whenever I fly. So therapy dogs, which are the ones we're gonna talk about specifically today, require credentialing. The credentialing is a exercise, series of exercises. It's very similar to the canine good citizen test, which is a test that the American Kennel Club um, administers and monitors. Um, therapy dog credentialing can be obtained from multiple organizations. Uh, the dogs frequently have to pass the test with a qualified examiner. Um, usually yearly, the dog's lab work um, has to be updated to make sure they're healthy and safe. And the uh, therapy dog typically um, has insurance policy that protects the handler for claims against accidents or injury when the dog is uh, working. These are uh, some of the therapy dog logos you can see. And here I'm working with Cooper to have him study to pass his therapy dog test. So what is the therapy dog's effect on patients? There's actually a fair amount of literature written on this subject. There's both a category of physical effects, and it appears that there is some science behind this, that the presence of a therapy dog lowers the patient's blood pressure, lowers their heart rate, slows their breathing, relaxes muscle tension, releases phenylethylamine, and also has an association with the release of serotonin, prolactin, and oxytocin hormones. There's also a category of psychological effects from therapy dogs, reduces anxiety, reduces loneliness, increases mental stimulation, relaxes muscle tension, lowers anxiety, and increases mental stimulation. Oh, I got those twice, but that's actually the most important thing. The interesting thing is that my dad, who uh, passed away about a month ago at the age of 95 and a half, um, was visited by my dogs for the last probably 10 years. And uh, I was a firsthand observer to the fact that his anxiety uh, was reduced and uh, he was much more relaxed and had more stimulation by having our dogs present. Now, what are the therapy dog characteristics? Typically, there's six things. The dogs are typically intelligent, usually have to have a friendly disposition, a calm demeanor. Typically, it's helpful to have a strong working drive. Uh, tidiness would refer to the fact that it's probably a little bit more work to have a dog that's a big drooler. So if they're a little bit less on the drooly side, it might be easier to manage. And usually these dogs have a very strong tendency to bond. Now, as far as the dog breeds, there's eight dog breeds that are the most popular breeds for the work in therapy dogs. Although any dog breed is suitable, and I've seen pretty much any dog breed be very successful. These are the eight dog breeds that are probably the most common. It's Labrador Retriever, the Golden Retriever, German Shepherd, Belgian Malinois, that's actually a real picture of my friend's dog, um, Poodle, Bernese Mountain Dog, and a Boxer, and of course the Portuguese Water Dog, and I've tried to be fair to all the dog breeds by making their pictures approximately the same size. size. Here's the Portuguese Water Dog. That's actually another um, real dog, famous dog named Oreo. And um, here's a couple of pictures of some other Portuguese water dogs who are all um, children of Oreo. The two on your left in this picture are Chelsea and Cooper. And the one on the right is a dog named um, Ozzy. So what is it about Portuguese water dogs? Well, um, people usually think they're poodles. No, they're not poodles. They're not a lab or something or a golden whatever. Um, they're actually a unique breed. They're working dogs. They were bred to be all around fishermen helpers. Their um, quoted uh, classic characteristics are affectionate and adventurous and athletic. And they're a robust, medium sized body. My dogs weigh about 45 pounds each. There's usually a single coat of hair, it's not fur, which accounts for the fact that there's very little shedding. I wouldn't say that they don't shed at all, but there's very little shedding. And another, perhaps the most important feature is that, um, at least my experience has been, they're much smarter than I am. Now, Portuguese water dogs also have two other features. They have an incredible bond to their people, and they love to work. There's a picture on your left of a dog named Dixie. 
And on the right, that's Cooper in my workshop dress for his work day. So a couple of other pointers is how to integrate a therapy dog into the office. I would suggest from my experience, it's good to have some foundational obedience and CGC therapy dog certifications are good. It helps to have dog friendly staff or people that can help you. Regular frequent office visits helps create familiarity and routine for the dogs so that they know that the office is a place that's safe and they're used to being there and they're used to interacting with the staff and the um, traffic pattern. And I would also be um, careful to be sensitive about patients or family members who come in who may be dog shy or anxious. Uh, it's not that common, but I'd say every once in a while somebody comes in and they're a little nervous. There's no point in making them nervous, so I just have the dogs um, put away somewhere safe while that patient is uh, being treated. Here's another example of Chelsea in the office, and you can sort of see how she's making eye contact with this patient, and that's very common uh, photograph, it's sometimes not always to get that exact moment, but there's always a bond that the dogs make with the patient, which is usually uh, quite remarkable. Now, therapy dogs in our medical office, the last thing I'd point out is don't forget about the staff. It's amazing how much the staff like having the dogs present. This is a picture of my administrative assistant who basically runs my entire life. And um, there's Cooper at his usual position at attention, keeping track of Jen. And I would say that the staff also find the dogs to be very helpful and make their day more pleasant. Here's another picture of some of our physician assistants and administrative staff um, giving Chelsea the attention that she deserves. Now, as far as working in the office with the dog's basic equipment, obviously you want to have multiple leashes. You have a water bowl and towels. It's good to have treats. Um, identification gear like a bandana. I like to keep their certification documents in plain sight. These are like their therapy dog ID cards. Um, you have to be aware that you have to take them out for the bathroom pre uh, periodically throughout the day. It's also a good idea to have a place where the dogs can be sequestered for some quiet time because they actually get pretty tired running around. And it's good to give them a little time to sort of chill out during the day and have their own private space. Last thing I'll talk about is that um, in the last few years, I've entertained a research project using our dogs in the office to look at anxiety in children. So we actually ran a prospective randomized clinical trial evaluating anxiety in children. We looked at a single variable, which was the presence or absence of the therapy dog. We looked at office procedures that usually make kids anxious, which was cutting a cast off, taking metal pins out of their elbow, or taking stitches out. So this is my experience. When I went to the pediatrician in the 60s, just before I got stuck with a needle, I usually said this is going to hurt like hell, and I hated going to the doctor. So we looked at um, doing this project. The pictures you're going to see of children are actually real patients who are in this study. Uh, our research findings, as you might imagine, is everybody liked having the dog present. The unexpected finding was that the dogs had multiple variable impact because of the parents who were in the room, and I'll show you a schematic of how that worked. It turns out that the presence of the dog, as you might imagine, had an impact on everybody who was present. With children, this included their adult advocates who were present in the room also. So this is a schematic of the initial experimental setup. Here you have a diagram of the child. And there's the doctor. And our estimation would be that there's going to be some anxiety created by the doctor-patient interaction. And we would introduce the dog. This is a picture of Cooper when he was uh, 10 weeks old. And then you have the dog interact and make the child more calm. What actually happened was we forgot about the fact, or I forgot, that in the experimental setup, there's another group present, it's called the parents. You can see them off to the right. So it turns out that there was an interaction between the doctor and the patient. But in children, they look to their parents a lot for body language and anxiety cues to determine how upset they should be. So the child was interacting with the parents. So the actual experiment turned out to be the fact that we had the patient present and the doctor, and there was that interaction, and then we had the dog present. The dog actually interacted not only with the patient, but the dog had a very strong effect on calming the parents down. And when the parents were calm and giving anxiety cues that were diminished, this had a synergistic effect on calming the patient down further. So the child was not only calmed down by the dog being present, but the dog calmed down the parents, and that effect then had an additional effect to calm down the patients. So it turns out that 
the dog affected everybody in the room, and the net beneficiary of this was the patient who was calmed not only by the dog, but also by their parents. So this was sort of like a win. So our experience to date is that the patients want the dogs. <laughs> we had a hard time getting control patients because once the patients found out they were in a study, nobody wanted to be in the group that didn't have a dog present. Our data also would suggest that the literature that's been written about this is pretty accurate, that the dog has a subtle impact both psychologically and physiologically on everybody in the room. We found out that some patients find out about, I have therapy dogs and they call ahead because they want to come in when the dogs are present. Patients, as you might imagine, are, you know, low threshold to tell me they much prefer my dogs than seeing me. And our office staff generally loves our dogs. So this is another example of um, somebody you'll meet later today, Danielle, who's one of Cooper's favorites. Just before we finish our little slideshow, I'll show you a few more pictures. These are all real photographs from the last several years in our office. These are pictures of, our, of Cooper and Chelsea interacting with patients. The one on your right is actually an entire family of uh, patient customers who wound up meeting our dog on separate occasions. I managed to get them all together to take this picture. And then these are pictures of Chelsea and Cooper sort of making themselves comfortable because they know the office and they know the staff and the staff know them. So they generally enjoy coming in um, and the staff find this to be sort of the highlight of their day when I managed to bring the dogs in on a Monday or a Friday afternoon. And again, these are all pictures uh, the dogs interacting both with therapy staff on the right and more patients on your left. On your right, you see Cooper's trying to make a phone call for Molly. And uh, even patients that are not in my office will see the dogs and they come running down the hall to say hello. And then they want to know if they can come back and see the doctor who has the dog present, which is a sort of unintended consequence. And of course, I couldn't resist walking around one day with a puppy in my pocket acting like I was some sort of crazy dog dealer. And um, again, these are all pictures taken in the last couple of years. Even our UPS guy, that's Mario, he, he comes to our office about three or four times a week. Absolutely loves seeing our dogs and Cooper knows him by name. So I hope you enjoyed this little slideshow. That was about 15 minutes. Both of my dogs are usually my practice audience for any talk that I give. And Chelsea usually has the same look. When I'm done, your story has become tiresome. Cooper's always in a good mood, so he's always saying I love this talk. And this is taco night at our house. My kids love dressing up the dogs. So we're gonna finish the slide portion now. I can take a break if the moderator will allow me. So I'm gonna switch gear here and turn on the remote unit. So I'm turning off this camera and we're going to turn on this camera. So um, we're going to take a look at Chelsea first. Now we don't talk about age for our women patients. So we're not going to discuss age with Chelsea. And Chelsea's a little interested in food. So hang on one second here. You want to just hold Cooper for a minute? All right. Chelsea, sit down. Good girl. So Chelsea was uh, my first dog. And um, she's got a very sensitive personality. She's very picky. And she's super motivated by food. So pretty much it's all about the treats. Whoop. And Chelsea is uh, pretty much, if Chelsea's not happy in the household, nobody's happy. Give me your paw. Oh, that's very good. All right. You can see she's got her little therapy dog label here. And Chelsea has been working in the therapy dog environment for actually at least the past 10 years. So she is an expert. She knows how to befriend everyone. And she basically runs the roost. All right, so we're gonna take Chelsea, because Chelsea's been working all day, and she's a little tired, so we're gonna take her and put her in her little quiet zone. There you go. Now, Cooper is my boy. And Cooper, 
we're going to take him off leash. And Cooper is motivated by a lot of things, but mostly he likes to have a good time. And Cooper is 10 years old, but he acts like his little puppy. You can see he also has his little therapy dog tag, and we've got him a little identifying bandana, which he's already slobbered on. Cooper does a lot of stuff. Oh, can walk on his back legs. Oops. And Cooper is a very, very high drive young man. So Cooper requires a lot of stimulation. We're going to take a walk down the hall. Is uh, Danielle in the room? I don't think so. Hey, Danielle? Want to go in your room? Just go in, go in pigeon room and sit on the bench. No, over here. Just go down that way because I don't want to. All right, so we're going to do a little simulation here. Danielle is um, Cooper's girlfriend. So we're going to walk down the hall here. Come on, buddy. And one thing that Cooper's learned how to do is um, he can open the door to the exam rooms which is uh, good and bad, but we'll show you that. Cooper, sit. Stay there, buddy. Stay there. Good boy. Good boy. Up. Good boy. So Cooper usually is now uh, comfortable enough to let himself in and he knows that when we have uh, people sitting on our bench he sort of goes up and joins them and he's very comfortable up here and he usually likes to after a while he'll sort of lie down his pillow just chill out this Danielle say hi hello Danielle's Cooper's fave there you go and Cooper's following me around because I've got a pocket full of treats of course Nice. But uh, he's got a really ideal personality for this kind of work. He's unbelievably um, engaged and he bonds with people and he just sort of knows what to do. And I'm lucky to have a dog like this um, because I'm not sure that it would be as easy if he didn't have such a good personality. He has a little bit of a love book. He's also very agile, so he can easily jump up and down on these benches without any trouble, usually without scaring or bumping anybody. So you want to go to the next uh, stop on the route here? Are they in the cast room? So you want to put them in there? You want to go get them? Yeah. I guess I'm going to have to put a mask on. <laughs> Say hello, Cooper. Ooh. Come here, buddy. So we actually have a real patient who's going to be here. And uh, given the environment we're in these days, I'm going to be putting a mask on, and they're going to be wearing a mask when I go visit them. And this young lady is a 10-year-old. We accidentally hurt her hand with a um, knife when she was trying to pit an avocado. And she wound up cutting her hand about um, four and a half weeks ago. She had surgery to repair a tendon, two tendons in her hand. And um, she's agreed to come by today to let me take a look at her hand and see how she's doing. And she has not met Cooper before, uh, but she heard about this and definitely wanted to meet Cooper. So we agreed, to, she, she agreed, and her parents agreed to come in today so we can um, do a little live engagement here and see how Cooper interacts with somebody he's never met before. Now I'm going to give this to Danielle for a second. All right. I got to put a mask on. Ready to go? All right. So this young lady's name is Casey. You're viewing me? Don't, yeah. No, no, no. Do, dog. Yeah. <laughs> I that's what happens when you put me in charge. <laughs> All right. Action shot. Come on, buddy. All right. Come on. Good boy. Stay with me. All right. Well, I think we will do that one room first. Do you want to keep him here for a sec? Maybe just grab his collar here so yeah. he doesn't go crazy. And then now when I whistle, he can send me. Hello. Come on, everybody. Come on. Come on. Oh, good boy. 
So this is Casey. So what do you think? Pretty oh, awesome, huh? Want to get some treats? Here you go. Don't don't want to be a pig, okay? It's a little bit pushy. Don't be pushy, buddy. So how are you doing? Everything good? Yeah, yeah. Not too much pain? Nope. Mom, yeah, yeah. everything good? Everything's good. Now you don't want to come to the office every day, right? Yeah, I know. Do you guys have a dog at home? We we do not right now. We did have a dog, yes. We had a very long hound. You want to buddy? How soft it is? People got a haircut. I can't get a haircut for another four months. <laughs> So we're good to go. Can I take your spoon off for a sec? Did we yeah. in? All right. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. All right. Let's take a look. See, instead of getting the cat skin, you're getting a dog skin. Let me see you your fingertips. Awesome. Look at that. It's better since yesterday. Yeah. It's a miracle. Perfect. Cooper. Yeah, your finger bends here. Can I bring your wrist up? That's awesome. All right, sweetie, it looks perfect. Awesome. All right, you're good to go. All right? All right, come on up here. So I've ruined your life now. You're going to have to get another dog. I wouldn't say that's ruining it. Yeah. All right, Cooper, stay here, buddy. He's a little bit pent up today because he hasn't been outside running around and too wet. You guys look good. Any questions? No questions. <laughs> Thanks for coming in today. I appreciate of this. Of course. Thank you for including us. We've got a web audience between two and five hundred people. Right oh now. wow! All and right. by we, do you mean Cooper? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. You guys are good. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. All right, say goodbye. Bye, Cooper. All right, buddy. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch out this way. All right, thanks. Thanks. I'm going to see you guys back in the like, I know what I say, Mom. Oh, Mom. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Bye. All right, very good. Come on, everybody. Good boy. All right. So I think that's it. Any more questions? Questions? So yeah, so we do uh, have one more question here of, of someone that's wondering if the dogs are, are even working during this time of COVID-19 when you're saying yeah, um, Well, the dogs aren't actual vectors for a virus and they don't shed anything. They're not, they don't, they're not antigenic. Um, being sensitive to the fact that not everybody might know that, I've been bringing them to the office in very select circumstances to make sure that the patients are all comfortable with that. Um, so I would say generally not. Uh, there have been days that because we've had sort of a reduction in force, I've had days where I go to the office to do work, but I'm not seeing patients. And I frequently have bought the, brought the dogs on those days because I know the staff wants to see them. And actually it's a huge impact in terms of reducing their stress and anxiety because it just makes them happier to have a dog around. Um, there's no data that the dogs can get this virus, nor are they capable of transmitting it to anyone. Um, assuming, of course, everybody follows the usual rules of just washing your hands frequently. But the answer is I've been bringing them a lot less unless I know the patients are comfortable with it. Um, but I have been bringing them on days when I'm, I'm not clinically busy, but I'm still working in the office because the staff like it so much. Okay, well, I think that is it for the questions. We, we definitely wanna thank you, Dr. Benson, for taking the time to, to share your friends with us. And we wanna thank Chelsea and Cooper as well for being such good dogs during this. Um, right. Thank you for everyone that is that has joined us today. Uh, I wanna, it, we wanna thank the North Suburban YMCA for working with us to put this on. And we just wanna remind you um, that there is another presentation on Tuesday, June 2nd with Dr. Kelly Gates, and she'll be taking you through pain management advice uh, during COVID-19 and beyond. So thank you again, please, if you have any uh, questions or comments Comments, enter those uh, into the questions section. Uh, we definitely want to learn and, and make these better each time. So if you have any comments, let us know. And we're just so happy that you all joined us. So have a great afternoon. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you very much.